Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Danielle DiMartino Booth believes that the United States Federal Reserve is to blame for rising housing prices and inflation. She also believes that 2023 is the year a housing crash could start. So does raising rates and tapering asset purchases, is that enough to bring down inflation? How effective is that going to be? I think that because... Um I think because we're just about finished with tax refunds being dispersed and there really is not another major source of cash coming to strapped U.S. households anytime soon, I certainly think that quantitative tightening <clears throat> and the, the impairment effect on the stock market, on the, the reverse wealth effect, which I do believe works in, in reverse, I think that that coupled with inflation is certainly going to be enough to bring down inflation for goods and services. And we're already seeing American families canceling vacations. This whole idea that they were going to move their spending from goods to services, that narrative is breaking down. But how long does it take to translate to real price decreases for products? Mm. Well, I mean, vacations, we should, we should ask, airlines, we ask, hotels. We should ask Chair Powell, because we should ask Chair Powell about the stickiness of housing inflation that he caused. You know that when he's at the podium, he's, oh, food inflation, Ukraine and energy inflation. None of this is my fault. Bless his heart, because housing inflation is the Fed's fault. And we've seen higher prints in the consumer price index in this last one tied to shelter than we saw at the height of the housing bubble. I think a lot of the inflation that you're seeing overseas uh, keys off of the fact that other countries import even more of their energy. And as far as runaway inflation in, in Canada, for heaven's sake, it's where, we, where we're sitting is one of the biggest housing bubbles in the history of mankind. So that also has been fueled by inappropriately easy monetary policy. That's not good. So having company when you're in hell is just not a good place to be. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a misery loves company kind of person. But do we at least get to see some central bank coordination in terms of tackling this? I think that we will see it to a certain extent, but I don't know uh, how strong Christine Lagarde's resolve is going to be because it's quite apparent that Germany's already in recession. So it's, it's going to be increasingly difficult to, uh, to push through with tightening monetary policy in other countries that are already further along in their process of falling into recession. Okay, so no central bank coordination necessarily. I, I, think, that, I think that central banks will be as as hawkish as they can be. Right. But again, once we start to see that inf that unemployment rate tick up, it's very difficult to hold your ground. Look, the rising energy prices <clears throat> can't blame the Fed for that. To a degree, that's bad policies in terms of uh, climate change, lack of investment into oil and, and gas companies due to ESG concerns. So the sector in, in itself hasn't been flourishing in, in the U.S., as we know, one of the first things that the Biden administration you know, did. Can, is, 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 is any of it their fault? I mean, did, did Americans have a lot more money because the Fed monetized every single penny of fiscal stimulus? Did Americans have more money to buy great big SUVs that they have now have to fill up with gas? So, I mean, in a way, I mean, you can excuse some of it, but not all of it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not laying the groundwork to, for excusing the Fed. I'm just saying that as far as oil prices go, you have those factors, which are policy factors, climate change factors. And then, of course, you also have this uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which right. threw everything for a loop. But what you have made very, very clear is that you do hold the Fed very much accountable for the runaway housing speculation. Oh, gosh. Yes. Look, um, when you have a company like CoreLogic, very respected housing data producer, come out and say that a third of all transactions in the country are by investors playing with all cash. I mean, that is the fruits of speculation that overly easy monetary policy fed. Monetary policy fed housing speculation. And that lies right at the door of Jerome Powell. And you don't get this frenzied level of interest unless you've got this investor class who's making it so difficult for the average American to buy a home that they feel like they have to engage in bidding wars. And bidding wars are things that feed upon themselves. And people talk about it. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to overbid by this much. I'm going to overbid by that. It's a process that was that the, 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 the Fed fed. <laughs> All right. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel.
This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So, now that the Fed is taking a different approach, there are concerns that we're going to see another housing collapse. What's your outlook there? We certainly are seeing it slow down and slow down fast. Um, you know, we, 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 we have, I think the latest data is 61% of all mortgage lenders are, are, are laying off their staff right now, reducing headcount. Um, we've got more homes under construction than any time since 1973. So the next time we see each other at one of these happy gatherings, uh, we'll be talking about oversupply and housing. And when was the last time anybody talked about oversupply and housing? But four out of the last five months, we've seen a million homes come complete. Well, it's very unusual. So, and, and mortgage rates are where they are. So affordability has never been as pinched as it is. Your average mortgage payment in the United States is up 39% year over year. Thank you, Jay Powell. So, but we are seeing a very sudden slowdown in the housing market. But there's no concern of a housing market crash like we saw in 2008. Would it be that severe, especially considering that the banks are, are better positioned to deal with that? The banks are better positioned, but we've certainly seen uh, a, gr a good number of FHA lending where people only have the three and a half percent down. And um, we've seen many, I mean, we've seen tremendous activity in second home sales. That's completely crashed in the space of three, four months. So how bad is the potential housing market crash? Paint me a picture here. And well, how I, do you see it playing out? <clears throat> if you're an average American and housing is, is housing used to be the biggest line item in, in your in your on your balance sheet. But all of a sudden the stock market became an even bigger line item on your balance sheet. What if they start to come down? Or what if the stock market comes down? Oh wait, it has. So if if you own two homes in America, and many, many, many baby boomers did go out and buy second homes after the pandemic hit. So if your stock market portfolio is in a meltdown mode and you own two homes and you have two mortgages, what are the implications? You're going to monetize one to batten down the hatches and make sure that you make sure that you don't have to work for 10 more years. Right. So we could see a rush of supply into the housing market. And we, we've already seen evidence that home price appreciation has begun to slow. Begun to slow. And I understand it's different for area and sector, of, of obviously. Course. Location, location, location. But if you were to hazard a guess in terms of a, a percentage decline in the U.S. housing sector at large, where where do you see that going? Oh gosh, um, I mean, it, it's so hard to see because we've still got double digit home price inflation, and and home price inflation follows the supply that we're seeing come online. But I certainly think that 2023 could be a year that we see a negative sign nationwide in front of home prices. All right, 2023 is when the housing market is really going to start to feel that. Well, you'll feel it now because, and you're hearing it from the few honest realtors in existence, <laughs> you're hearing that, that, that the bidding wars have, have ebbed. You're, healing that, you're, you're hearing that people are lucky to sell their home. Mm -hmm. So while there's still gonna be pockets of hotness and it takes a long time for the narrative to change, right. especially for your average home buyer, um, the message is coming through loud and clear. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available, and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. 
My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.